Hi, welcome back to PSOE Math Heuristic Lesson. Now today we are going to look at another method on how to solve problems, which is to draw a diagram. So why do we draw a diagram? We draw a diagram because we need to visualize a problem. For example, model drawing, that's also, uh, that's also drawing a diagram. Uh, so sometimes when we can't draw the model, uh, then what do we do? Then we may, have to, we may have to think of other methods, other ways to to solve the problem. So another way will be to draw a diagram, which is, uh, which is any diagram, right? Any diagram that will, that will suit the problem. All right, so in this problem, uh, it might be a little bit hard to draw the model. So what can we do? So then we, we can draw something else, okay? Don't always have to be model. It can always be something else. Uh, like it can also be, uh, it can also be uh, rectangles and squares. For example, if you have area and parameter problems and, uh, and there's no diagram given to you. So how are you going to solve the area and parameter question? So you draw the diagram, you draw out the shapes, right? Okay, so let's look at this problem and uh, let's see how do we solve this problem. Uh, this is a three mark question. It can also be a two marks at P6 level. Uh, so as the level goes lower, then the marks will get higher. So the chairs in the hall were arranged in rows. Each row had the same number of chairs. Jaden sat on one of the chairs. There were five chairs to his right <coughs> and five chairs to his left. There were six rows of chairs in front of him and six rows of chairs behind him. So how many chairs were there in the hall? Okay, now it's going to be quite hard to solve if you don't have a method. So I'm going to draw out this problem. And uh, so how do we draw this problem? It's like model drawing. The first sentence you can't draw, you jump. You skip to the next sentence. And uh, each row had the same number of chairs. So if you don't know how to draw, you can jump as well. You can jump. And then Jaden sat on one of the chairs and you're still not sure how to draw, you jump. There were five chairs to his right. So maybe we can draw something, right? So Jaden is at the cross. Right, Jada is sitting at the cross and there were five chairs to his right. So you just draw another five chairs and then five chairs to his left. Okay, so what's the lesson here? Now the lesson here is uh, any sentence you don't know how to draw, you jump. But maybe some of you tell me that, uh, oh, you know how to draw the first sentence, then go ahead and draw the first sentence. Otherwise you can skip the sentence and until you come to a sentence that you can draw. Okay, so there were five chairs to his right, five chairs to his left, and there were six rows of chairs in front of him. So you can draw a line to represent a row. So there'll be, there'll be six lines. So one, two, three, four, five, five, and six. Okay, let me try again. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So the, the diagram doesn't have to be very nice, right? Just enough to serve your function, right? Just, just, just presentable to, right? just need, just needs enough for you to solve, right? You don't have to make it very nice. Okay, now then there are six rows behind him. So you just draw six lines. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, not a very nice picture, but I think it's enough, enough for us to solve the problem. All right, so how many chairs were there all together? Then you can count the chairs in one row. So how many chairs are there in one row? So you look carefully, uh, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. So there are 11 chairs in one row. And how many rows are there all together? So you have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, right, 13. So you have 13 rows, right, all together. So how many chairs are there in the hall? So you have 13 rows of 11. So 13 times 11, uh, so what do you get? 13 times 11, you will get 143 chairs. And that's how you solve this simple problem through the method called draw a diagram. So when do we use this method? Well, you use this method when you think, you think that you can draw out the picture, right? But if you are not sure how to draw out the picture or you don't know how to draw out the picture, then you can't use the method. It's only when you know how to draw or you have an idea, an idea how to draw out this problem, then you use the method. So if you don't have an idea of how to draw out this problem, then you may want to switch method to some other methods, right? So uh, a very common a very common category of questions that we can draw a diagram is your area and parameter problems, like what I mentioned just now. Uh, so when we come across area and parameter problems, sometimes the questions don't have the shapes given to you. Uh, they don't have the diagram given to you, so you can draw out the shapes, right? You can actually draw out the shapes and then use your own diagram to solve the area and parameter problems, 
right? Okay, so that's the end of our heuristic lesson. So stay tuned for the next heuristic lesson.